Hello everybody, Mr. Odom here, and today I'm going to look at some problems from section 3.2, problems 20, 22, and 24. You'll need a pencil, composition book, or notebook paper. You might need a calculator. You might not. It's good to have one handy. And the learning target for this video is I can apply properties of operations to subtract linear expressions. Okay, I've made a couple videos where we've been adding uh, linear expressions and hopefully you looked at those and they were helpful. Today we're going to subtract them. And again, I'm going to solve these problems using both a horizontal and vertical method. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So problem 20, 6d plus 5 minus 2d minus 3d. All right. Um, so using the horizontal method, uh, what am I going to do? I need to know if I can drop the parentheses. Well, um, there is no value in front of that um, linear expression. And there isn't a value in front of this linear expression either. Okay, so can I drop the parentheses? Now, you have to be careful. Before we do this, um, let's think about it. We are subtracting. And remember when we subtracted, um, things like six minus nine, what did we do? We added the opposite. So before I think about um, dropping parentheses, I want to turn my problem into an addition problem. So let's do that. Six D plus five. And let me add, and then in parentheses, I just write down the opposite of each one of these terms, the opposite of two is negative two. The opposite of negative 3D is positive 3D. Okay, now, um, again, I look in front of each one of these uh, linear expressions. There isn't anything there. I am adding them together. So now I can drop the parentheses, just like we did before in, um, when we were adding linear expressions. So, I can drop the parentheses. I can identify like terms. Here's one another way that people like to identify them without drawing shapes around them. So there's my like terms. I can combine them. 6D plus 3D is 9D. Um, 5 minus 2 is positive 3. Like, are there any like terms? No. Are there any parentheses? No. I'm done. Okay, so now let's move over to the vertical method and let's look at this one. So, um, again, let me add the opposite. So, 6d six, six plus 5. Let me add the opposite here. So, this would be negative 2 plus 3d. Okay. Can I drop the parentheses? You can. And I'm going to do a couple things. One, I'm going to drop the parentheses. Second thing I'm going to do is I like it when the like terms are all lined up together. So for this part, for this linear expression, I'm going to change the order of those terms. Can I do that? Yes, that's the same thing as saying, can I have 3 plus 2? Or can I write that as 2 plus three, that's called the commutative property of addition. So I use that property here, and that allows me to go ahead and change the order of the terms. And now notice the like terms are all uh, lined up. So 6D plus 3D, that is 9D, and that is positive three, and I get the same answer. Okay, so horizontal, vertical methods. All right, let's look at 22. So there is nothing in front of, nothing in front of that linear expression. So the parentheses can go away. 2n minus 9. Now, if I look here, there is a value that is in front of this linear expression. And that tells me I need to use the distributive property. So negative 5 times negative 2.4, that's a positive 
number. Whoops, let me put that in blue. Try to be consistent. So that's positive, and that's 12n. Negative 5 times positive 4 is a negative 20. Let me identify my like terms. And let me combine them. 2n plus 12n is 14n. Negative 9 minus 20 is negative 29. There you go. I'm done. All right. So if you like using that horizontal method, it works pretty well. Okay. Um, let's try this using the vertical method. So before I can do anything, um, I well, there was parentheses around here. Sorry. Um, I need to know if I can get rid of the parentheses. Well, um, I can for the first linear expression, 2n minus 9, and I'm subtracting. Um, here, I need to use the distributive property. Okay. This time, I'm not going to say it's negative 5 times this because I'm subtracting here. Okay. I am subtracting. Make that subtraction sign a little smaller. So I am subtracting. And what am I subtracting? 5 times negative 2.4n is negative 12n. 5 times 4 is 20. Okay. Um, and remember what we did with subtraction. We turned it into an addition problem. So let's do that here. So I have 2n minus 9. Let me add. And what are the opposites here? The opposite of negative 12n is just 12n. The opposite of positive 20 is negative 20. All right. And then I can go ahead and combine my like terms. And I get 14n minus 29. And I get the same answer. All right. So a little bit trickier here um, for subtraction. I kind of like using this horizontal method uh, better, um, but uh, you can still work through it and get the same answers. You just have to be careful. All right. Um, let's look at problem 24. With the horizontal method, I know already I need to use the distributive property. I'm going to distribute negative one fourth. Okay, so let's go ahead and work through that. Three fourths times three x is just nine fourths x plus um, three fourths times six um, would be 18 over four, and I can simplify that to be nine over two okay i may want to eh, it's fine we'll just leave it as nine over two and um now negative one fourth times five x negative times positive is negative five fourths x and then negative one fourth times negative 24 is positive six okay um, so that's what I have there. Let's go ahead and identify our like terms. There's a like term. There's a like term. Here's like terms. Here's like terms here. Let's combine them. Nine fourths minus five fourths is just four fourths X, right? Plus I have nine halves plus six. And if I think about what is 6, how can I write the number 6 so it has a denominator of 2? Well, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So I can think of 6 in my brain. I can think of 6 as 12 over 2. So 9 over 2 plus 12 over 2 is 21 over 2. Okay? And then 4 divided by 4 is just 1. So this is x plus 21 over 2, or you can write it as x plus, and this would be 11 and um, what would it be? 10 and 1 half, sorry. 10 
Uh, let me erase that. That's a mess. Try again. 10 and 1 half. Okay. And so that is the answer to problem 24. And either one of these will work. All right. Let's look at this vertical method real quick. Um, again, I need to use distributive property here, 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 and here. So um, I get 3 fourths times 3x, 9 fourths x, 3 fourths times 6, that's 9 halves. I'm subtracting 1 fourth times 5x is just... 5 fourths x, um, and then 1 fourth times negative 24 is negative 6. Notice I leave this in parentheses. When I'm subtracting, I leave this second linear expression um, in parentheses until I change it into an addition problem. So let's do that now. Let's add the opposite. So 9 fourths x plus 9 halves. Now let me add. The opposite of 5 fourths is negative 5 fourths x. That 5 is kind of weird, right? Let's try that again. Sometimes my pen gets a little, I'm not very good at doing that. There you go. And then I also have the opposite of negative 6, which is positive 6. Okay. Here are my like terms. And I can go ahead and combine them just like I did in this part of this problem. Let's combine those like terms. So this becomes 4 over 4x, which we already know is just x. And we already know that 9, plus, 9 halves plus 6 is just 10 and a half. Or x plus 21 over 2. Either one works. Okay, so um, we have practiced subtracting linear expressions. Again, the method that you choose is up to you. Um, uh, it, it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me most is that you understand what you're doing uh, and that you can show your steps um, so you understand what you're doing. And so that's all I have for now. Hopefully uh, that was uh, helpful. Remember to bring questions to class and ask. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, you guys. I'm out.